Okay, cool. Yeah, um, so I am Sean Brakefield, uh, creator and founder of Infinite Studio. Uh, we make creative apps for you know, artists um, and designers. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's our passion um, to make your life just easier as artists. And I'm here with Andrew. Do you wanna introduce yourself real quick, Andrew? Hey, Andrew Theophilopoulos. I'm gonna be doing so many different things today. So this isn't necessarily gonna be a straightforward demo. It's gonna be like touch and go on all these interesting little features that we've got in Infinite Painter. Nice. Very and then, exciting. yeah, Andrew is leading uh, creative development over here at Infinite Studio. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, it's going to be awesome. He's got a lot to show. So I'm going to let him yeah. take over and I'll just take over the chat. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because this, I was playing with Jojuki's sketch, uh, and I'm not sure if Jojuki's going to be here today or not, but definitely check them out on their Instagram. Um, kind of reminds me of, of my early days of, digital art, which I learned Photoshop um, maybe in ninth, 10th grade. And it was one of those things where I was learning techniques to bring my ink sketches uh, from pen and paper and then scanning it in and doing the artwork uh, digitally or at least finishing it. And I don't know if you guys remember how hard it was to get uh, an extraction of just the line art. Um, if you were to do something really nice, like a, a full page of comics, how do you get the white out of there? Uh, and so a few techniques I remember when I was a wee lad, um, all relied on using multiply to kind of get, get your line art or your drawing or your shading to kind of influence uh, the background. But the only problem with that is you couldn't necessarily colorize those lines uh, with a clipped layer mode or anything because you're still painting on white, white piece of paper. Uh, so I have two different versions of Jujuki's um, drawing here. And if I could just kind of show you what that looks like, we have one that's got white ink on this uh, white filler. And then just what I would consider your everyday piece of paper, if you've got your drawing uh, and you want to scan it in, but how on earth do you extract the line art? Um, in Multiply, if you were to turn this on to Multiply, we'll do that real quick, uh, bring out your layer mode, Multiply, uh, you can see through it. But the problem there is when we try to clip this layer and let's say I wanna colorize the line. So if I wanna make really nice red lines, oops, wrong brush. I'm not actually able to clip to the line because this is essentially a multiply layer is like a sheet of glass. So if you were to put ink on that glass, uh, it, would, it would stick to it. Um, so Sean, geniusly developed a whole new way that I think is going to change every uh, one of my illustrative teachers and uh, the people that I looked up to uh, who are doing line art or at least scanning their work and struggling to get that white to go away. John's created something better than the glass of multiply. It's almost like the death to multiply. Uh, and I would call it air. I mean, instead of <laughs> a multiply turning into a sheet of glass, uh, we're going to turn this into thin air. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is called, if you scroll down on your layer modes, the line art mode right at the very bottom. All right, what the heck just happened? This is kind of similar to the multiply mode, except if you were to do a copy merge of this piece, let's just copy merge. We got a brand new one. Essentially, at this point, we now have just the line art. Sean's linear layer mode essentially gets rid of all the white without any uh, selecting or magic wand or blasting the contrast. So at this point, now I can create a new layer and I can clip it to that and uh, can colorize my lines. Nice. So instead of a glass sheet, we have air, like atmosphere, it's gone completely, which is extremely useful for anybody working on comics or who someone wants to like, take uh, different elements from their uh, artwork and paste it in. So another way to use the line art mode is kind of like a stamp way. Um, so if you take this, this one does have a little bit of filler. I'm just gonna do that real quick. If you turn this one to line art mode, since it has the white there, what's gonna happen? It's actually going to cut out everything all the way to the back of the room, which is right now a white piece of paper or blank that white is acting as like antimatter. It's totally burning down to the core of your, your background. So this is live, I can, I can essentially move it and you can see how 
everywhere there was white on this layer, in that line art mode, it's actually going to go straight to the bottom, which is awesome. Um, but what other things can you do with the line art mode, which as a painter, I never really interacted with this kind of stuff. Um, I am deathly afraid of line art, which is why I pulled up Jochuki's beautiful sketch here. Um, but what other things could you do with that practically? Uh, on a new layer, I'm going to show you how you can use that line art layer mode, but built into brushes. Now, this is actually a set of brushes that we're giving out for free. Um, Sean, if you want to paste the brush pack link in the uh, chat, anyone can download this if yeah. you're on Android or iPad or a Mac uh, M1. You can download the brushes and do exactly what I'm about to do. Let's turn off the drawings real quick. So what's happening here? This is actually the line art mode, but built into a brush. So essentially you've got these hatch marks and in between them is white. And if you remember the white is like antimatter, it's going to cut through everything on, on at least this layer since it's a brush and not a layer mode. Uh, we're still on normal, normal layer mode here. Um, so building that into a brush kind of opens you up for a crazy whole new amount of like interesting textures and um, hatching ability. And we can turn stamps. If we had a brush made out of this art here, we could do a bunch of Jojuki drawings and just kind of sketch with that. But as you notice, the white is going to erase completely. So again, why is that cool? Because now we can clip. Let's just go ahead and do that. Get a nice brush. Oops. So now we're clipping to that layer under it and we're colorizing the line. And like I said before, that white is totally not even there. It's erasing it on the fly as we go. Kind of crazy. Um, I feel like this is going a little bit too far, a little too fast though. Uh, people might not necessarily know exactly what the app is going to be about. And we're going to start from scratch because learning the interface uh, is just like a step away from getting you in and drawing. Um, so I'm going to go up into the right corner here, or even the left corner will take me back home. All right. Welcome to Infinite Painter. This is your basic desktop. Everything you need to know here is kind of like a standard folder system. I've got a few different folders for figure painting, um, landscape painting, stuff like that. Um, but the home is going to have your most recent project. So let me just pull one up to kind of show you how adding different painterly techniques with some of that line art stuff created a really interesting texture pass for a painting I did uh, at camp this week. So when you're opening a project, uh, let's go straight to the beginning, actually, one more time. I want to go and get a blank canvas. So this is where you're going to find your standard like building of a canvas. Really interesting stuff here at the bottom though that you wanna pay attention to is your time-lapse. If you wanna have a recording, if you want it to be 4K, you could set that all up right here. Uh, we do have colored uh, background if you need to start with something like that, as well as some really interesting textures that maybe you wanna start with, um, which kind of adds to all the, the base of a really interesting file that you can save as a preset. Uh, for me, I have just the full HD I like to have really good quality video recording at the same time. Uh, you would go ahead and create, or you can start from a photo, which will just kind of snag the dimensions uh, and kind of pre-build it. And another really interesting one, which we'll go into later, is the pattern. So let's go back. I want to pull up this piece and kind of break down the process a little bit because we're using uh, painting techniques as well as some of those hatching techniques to create insane, crazy, weird textures that I don't even know what I was doing at the time. I was just kind of laying it out and seeing what happened. Um, but let's go back in time here and just kind of see what that's like. Turn off all the layers. Okay. So I actually started this piece by looking at my, um, the scene in front of me and drawing with that ink brush that you saw a second ago, which totally erases all the lines under it. And if I could do it one more time here, you can see how just adding a little bit more of that texture in a line art form kind of gave me the flow of the sketch I wanted to make, which honestly, I didn't know where I was going at the time, but it, it gave me a lot of interesting little flicks and 
you know, hinges of, of texture that I wasn't necessarily looking too close at the landscape, but the mix and mash of, of the lines were kind of giving me different sets of flow, which not something I've ever, ever done. Um, and so I think what I did here is it was actually kind of dark. So I, I, in the background went through and just kind of colorized what I saw as the base painting. So let's call it that. But this with the line art starts to add really interesting textures. Now I did show you guys a second ago, the stereo uh, effect in brush form, but let me zoom in here because I'm using a stereo, which is like that RGB effect. If I could just show you extra. I'm using that at the very beginning of this, which totally like kind of blew my mind for a second there. Cause it had this like interesting um, kind of like fuzziness to it where it's almost like you can't see at night, which the, the sun was setting at this point. So it gave me that really interesting like flicker of color and light. And at that point, you can do some really cool stuff by uh, copy and merging it. And from here, like what happens when you start to blur? You start to get the ability to become more painterly as you push forward and adding new layers on top. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump back to to the full piece so you can see what that looks like after adding all of its details. All right, let's go home real quick um, because I actually wanna show off how to create some really interesting um, patterns with a brush pack that we sent you guys. Let's go full HD like that. Okay. Here we go. So Sean, if you want to paste in the uh, the chat, we have a brush pack that we made with Anthony Jones, as well as myself. And in here, you're going to find a few really interesting brushes. And I'll be able to show you kind of how these are working uh, a little bit later. So uh, using that same feature of the line art mode, but with a stamp that's like a cloud. I'm just going to make a cloudy scene real quick and, and show you how easy it is. Uh, and like I said, this brush has the black lines in the outline, uh, the outline. And then on the interior, there's white, which is acting as like antimatter, it's erasing it. So uh, before I go and kind of draw, I just wanted to show everybody that everything that we have up here at the top is kind of my custom interface, which I can add and remove manually. So all the things up top might not show up when you're uh, starting up Infinite Painter for the first time. But yeah, I encourage you to go into any tool that you really want, dock it. That's the same here. If you want to delete a layer or a clear layer, you can put it up there. Um, and essentially any of these little icons that you find and you really want to play with, put that at the top. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick demo for kind of like a cloudy scene and just see what this looks like. It's really simple. Nice. Okay. I love this layering. So, I know it, it's like it's coming forward at you. It's it's so bizarre, um, and I can break it up a little bit with less pressure, and it'll feel a little bit more realistic. Um, but for today's purposes, I think that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, go in and start using some. Sorry. Sorry, I was gonna say. Um, yeah, I mean, what's just amazing about this is like that's line art. Like that's not like just like white. It's like literally you can change the background color and. It's just literally just line art. Yeah, it's pretty cool. it is. It's so great. Well, I might as well show you is here we go. Let's get that there and you can turn it off and yeah. So um, I'm going to combine this and kind of get these shapes. And let's see, where's the tolerance? Okay, so I'm using the uh, magic wand. Everybody knows that. And I'm actually going to go back into my hatch brush. And I'm just going to go in and kind of like create really interesting flow of those like fluffy textures and clouds. And this is the kind of stuff that uh, would take forever with pen and pencil, right? Or not pen, pencil, but just pen. Like if you're going to town on the hatches to create this really interesting flow of, of, of line art, like it's just not going to happen. And <laughs> I've seen the masters do it. They do it amazingly, but uh, hopefully over the course of the next few months, I'll come up with some new brushes that really feel super realistic um, because this has a lot of potential to do uh, what one of my favorite line art 
artist does. Let me pull up the navigator real quick, or not the navigator. I'm gonna import a few uh, photos for reference. So you can see the kind of effect that I really wanna capture with this. So uh, I imported and instead of going for a layer, I'm gonna do reference. And I don't know how many other people need that reference on the side of them when they're sketching, but it's kind of like standard for concept art if you're coming up with your own imaginative ideas. Um, but you can see in here how this uh, kind of flow was done, you know, way before computers, but hopefully soon I can get some brushes that really feel just like this and, and uh, I'll create some really interesting art with it. Um, but that's not the only one. Let's pull up another because I want to have um, just a good example here of, of a working interface when you have your images as reference. Just so convenient, and again, look at look at the flow of the line. That must take forever. Um, so I'm trying to get a little bit closer to to what you see in these here. Okay, uh, and I can go in. There's another brush that I made for you guys, which is the thin hatch. So pretty similar. Um, just all about your personal taste for like how thick you want these lines. Um, and essentially, what's happening here is this brush is made up of. Uh, a texture instead of like a normal head source where usually you have a brush head it's got all the, the detail and texture in it this one actually is um, built into the we call it texture uh, so it's one of these bars here which essentially acts as each little dot in this rake brush um, and the great thing is when you put it on warp it's actually going to follow the form so that's how i'm getting these dots of black to kind of shape shift and morph along with the flow of the pen. Uh, and then the white is erasing. So if I turn off background, you can see that again. Super convenient. Um, so let's go back. Uh, I'm going to now magic wand this area. And we'll do another little set. Now, honestly, when I play with brushes like this, I'm kind of mesmerized. I'm just constantly just hanging in, in limbo or I just stare at it. So it's really fun, even if you're, you're using it for like testing purposes, but uh, extremely relaxing also. Okay, so I've got two different layers here. Um, here's why the brush uh, and the line art modes are so powerful. This is too much, honestly, for me, because I love coloring my line. Like if I'm doing any sort of line work for a character, for environment or something, uh, especially the Mitchells and the Machines, there's a great example yesterday and there's how to create the style that they were making, um, is not just outlining it like the good old black and white comic days, but now we have like a more realistic sense of light and color and reaction happening um, with the color of the line. Uh, which turn out to be like extremely beautiful for films like uh, Spider-Man and also the Mitchells first machines. But let's clip again and let's go ahead and paint some color on here. And you can really start to see why you might want to use this. And I'm going to pull up an example that's a little bit more fleshed out in a minute. But yeah, so now we have colored lines. So if I were to go to the layer below it and I wanted to create some really nice Picture there. We're not going to have black lines anymore. Now we have uh, a nice golden line under a golden color. And I'm just going to back out now and show you what the final product might look like when you go through this kind of obsessive version of like making really nice line and flow and then colorizing those lines. Um, this is kind of the final effect, the look that I was uh, hoping to capture, um, which has like. <laughs> has very colorful vibes to it, but you wouldn't have known this was line art or any sort of black kind of workflow. Um, That's beautiful. The black ink, the black ink uh, acting as the, the source or at least the, the thing we're gonna colorize and then clipping your layers to it. So th this didn't take too long. Um, I was building the brushes as I made them, but you could see how just a little bit of flow gives you the opportunity to get like what appears to be a lot of heavy work in Hatchmark. Um, so oh, when you, you download these brushes, sorry? I was gonna say, can you zoom into that tree? I mean, I just love yeah. the detail on that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna show you guys how that was done in a minute also. Um, but I encourage you to download the brushes, just see how they're made, take them apart, go into the brush manager system, which is the three little dots here at the um, top right. Uh, you're gonna have your light box goodies and 
go into there and just kind of see what everything is built from. Um, so the tree is very similar, except I'm not using the texture function where it warps. Uh, instead, I'm using the brush head function, which is totally different. And I'm going to show you why that's good. Um, so for that tree, yes, I cheated. Uh, but when you're making your own brush, is it really cheating? Like I'm doing a lot of work to get to this point. So it's kind of like I get to cheat if I want. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and merge all of these color. Let's delete these. Delete, delete. Oops. And then I'm going to merge these two. Okay. So now this is one layer. But if I want to keep drawing on it, um, let's say I want like a tree. I'm going to use my custom tree brush, which looks like this. And that's essentially just a source where I, I hatch. I do a lot of like interesting hatch work, um, give you the flow, like it's super random. Um, and then in between all of these lines is white. So it's acting as antimatter. It's burning down to the core. Let's look at that up close. You can see uh, the background through it. Um, so this is so unique and interesting. Like I've never seen anything close to this. Um, but if you were to need something like custom texture. Um, watch, in just a few seconds, I have a fully detailed hatch system. So look at that and how organic and unique it is from just a single like second of brushwork. And then look at this, uh, this piece here where there's like uh, a few sections where you could utilize this same technique and then take out your hatching brushes and go back and get the smaller hatch, and go back. And what's really good about these brushes here is the size weight that I put into them um, because you can get to the point where you're, you're doing just like a few little hatch marks or you're pushing really hard and you're creating something like really crazy. Isn't that interesting? So here I'm using shape snapping tools, which is so helpful for so many reasons. And we're going to go into that a little bit later too. But yeah, that's the line art stuff. And I'm really excited to see what you guys can pull off with it because I spent a little bit of time and I, as a painter kind of fell for it. So if you can find inspiration, this is Franklin Booth, by the way. Um, if you can find inspiration and you want to push forward with some of this line art stuff, we would really like to see what you come up with. Um, and if you make brushes, send them to us because I, I love to test them too. Uh, but yeah, so that's the cool features we got going on here. Let's turn this to a color so you can see how it's it's not on multiply. It's not on a layer mode. It's just brushes with antimatter white. Um, super fun. Okay. Let's take a step back. Let's go to do something a little different. Um, I want to go in. Let's start with... I'm going to show you guys some of those... Um, effects brushes because everybody knows filters like motion blur for example if you have a fight scene or something and you want motion blur it's kind of you have to flatten uh your psd or or, or create some sort of effect it's really hard to get um an effect like that like a special effect or a filter to follow the form of something that you want to do so in your brushes uh go ahead and get like an airbrush. You can find any of our airbrushes and kind of change the special effect, which is in the special section. And here I'm using the directional blur filter. So you scroll down. This is so cool for action. Like if you have, let's pretend like these gloves here, we're punching. I'm just using a brush and I can create on this flat layer here, a sense of motion blur. So you can picture like a fight scene where you're using custom blurs there or any sort of action going on and how you can brush that into it. That's insane to me. That's the, <laughs> I haven't really used it in an illustration yet, but um, the more like epic of a scene that I get into, I could see myself using something really cool like that. Um, and since I had trouble showing you the real like glory of the stereo filter brush, um, this is how I uh, kind of created those effects. So instead of flattening your image and then doing that stereotype uh, effect, 
you can actually build it into your brush. And instead of like an opacity meter, which normally is what you're painting with, uh, we have the effect and uh, the strength of how that effect is going to look. So um, I can essentially get this to a point where I like it um, and then go in there and, and just with a small brush, just hit some spots. Like it's very, very touch and go wherever I feel like I want some of that to start happening. So that dot grid is now like a textural dot grid and I'm just using the stereo to kind of separate the colors. Um, so yeah, try that. Take any brush you want. Um, if you, I think I was using here the sprayers, which is gonna give you those soft brushes. Uh, so pick a sprayer. Let's go with the, I don't know, soft airbrush. And what you wanna do is uh, duplicate that with the three buttons next to it. Uh, and when you duplicate it, name it, Lightbox. Uh, and at that point you can start editing that brush and it's gonna stay with you. Um, if you do want to grab that brush and put it in a favorite folder, uh, just press and hold and then drop it in the Lightbox goodie bag. Okay. Uh, there is some fill brushes. Now I use fill quite a few times for um, concept art, but in this case, I'm using a fill that's got the, the dot grid in it. So scroll down to your fills and let's go to the screen tone. I'm just gonna make a new layer up top. And here we go. So I can essentially, I, I don't think I was um, doing any sort of special stuff here on the character, but if you zoom in, you could tell it's, it's not shaded in a painterly way. So for me to get outside of my comfort zone of painting with you know, pure colors and blending and mixing um, to using something like this, where I can essentially pick like the shadow color and do detailed shading work with it to create a really interesting effect. Like that's, that's awesome. But it doesn't have to end there because as a painter, I'm still like, I want to, <laughs> I want to mess with smudging and stuff. So like what's stopping you from smudging that? How, how does that kind of create a new effect for you and see how that fades in there? That's, that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna start pushing into as I play more with this app and I start playing with the brushes. Uh, we give you all the tools to kind of create interesting feelings and like textures, uh, but I find myself doing really crazy stuff um, to create new interesting textures with just the base brushes. Um, so don't feel afraid to um, duplicate these, make your own versions, save your own pack, if you want to put them online, share with your friends, that's awesome. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool for texture, I'm going to go into Liquify. Everybody knows Liquify. Let's just, you know, I'm just going to do something weird for a second. Uh, one way that I got interesting textures is actually going to the Restore button. <laughs> and what that does is it brings it back. It brings it right back to what you had before. So let me see. Let me just tap the Restore in like small sections and like, what does that look like? You can see how I'm now creating like insane weird stuff. This is perfect for concept art. If you're creating a monster or an alien or a shape that you don't know how to do, it could be a mix of like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this weird crazy thing. Uh, and then I'm gonna go to the restore and like, what's gonna pop out of this? That's so cool, yeah. Look at the stuff that I'm able to make in texture wise. So I wasn't planning on showing you guys that, but it is really, really cool. Uh, let me try don't break my file. I'm gonna go back. So I just did a few things. Maybe I accidentally screwed up my original file, which had a lot of cool work in it. And I was showing my friend, oh, check this stuff out. And I screwed up my file. Go ahead and hold down on your project. And here you're gonna have the restore button. And look at this, this is insane. This is insane. I hate Photoshop when it crashes. Uh, I know it's supposed to like auto save and stuff and there is a chance that you could save uh, and restore your work. But look at this, built into the file is all the old versions. And this is a really, really old painting. So let me go to, uh, maybe this one is a better example. Let's see what kind of history is on here. Um, so I can go to restore and I can go all the way back in time from the night I started it to the very point where I am at right now. And if you ever have a corrupt file or something happens, please just remember you can restore it to yesterday's uh, point. Perfect. Um, that's the kind of thing that more apps need to be conscious of, which is like 
saving our butts when we screw up. <laughs> and I mean, sometimes I've given my, my iPad to a friend, like try this and they totally accidentally screw up my file. I'm like, dang it. So yeah, too, uh, very useful. So I'm gonna pull up some new stuff. We're gonna move on to the next type of art that we can make uh, with the app and some of the tools. So um, in this piece, I'm gonna show off probably one of the more cooler and more powerful features that we have, uh, which is our perspective grids. So let me get, what kind of brush should I use here? I'll use uh, Anthony yeah, Jones. While you're pulling system. that up, Andrew, because uh, we had like a comment, I mean, they, I had a few uh, comments around that restore function. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of a huge thing with uh, the newest 7.0 update. You know, it's on iOS, it's coming to Android. And um, yeah, I mean, what we wanted to do is just achieve this ability to kind of have trust in the program and not have to worry so much about saving. Because, I mean, if you jump into like a Google Doc, for example, uh, you don't really have to think about it when you jump out, right? And that's kind of the same thing here is like, yeah, you shouldn't really have to think about it. You should just kind of just worry <laughs> about like getting the work done. And then when you leave, the program should basically take care of it for you. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys see me, I keep jumping back to my home screen, like uh, like I have ADD, which maybe I do, but how many times would I have needed to like save and, uh, and, and you know, it does it right there for you on the fly. Um, so while you were gone, um, I went ahead and pulled up the three point perspective that I used to create this piece. Let me turn this off so you can kind of see what that looked like originally um, here. So one thing you might want to know, uh, if you use four fingers, you're going to go into full screen mode, which is great for showing like the preview. You can still paint here. Um, I don't have a layer visible, but it's, it's kind of a way to just get you into the, the painting. Um, so you can see, like, I wanted to create this really massive sense of scale, which I am not good at uh, in any of my paintings. Um, probably because I don't mess with perspective that much. And I don't know who else is like, I definitely learned how to do perspectives from, from scratch. Um, but it's tedious, it's clunky, it's like a real mess in terms of the process. Um, so now that I have access to these tools, I'm like, oh, okay, let me try something really interesting with uh, perspectives. So I'm using a three point. Uh, you also have two point, one point, and a, uh, what do you call that? The cylinder, curve, a linear, isometric, and grid, uh, which are all useful for their own unique uh, features. But here you can see I'm just using a basic brush. And I was able to do a lot of this detail work with the magnet on. And essentially the magnet kind of gets you from being free flow. Uh, and then once you click the magnet, you're gonna be stuck. Um, so a couple of cool things I should show you. Um, what happens when you combine a brush? And I'm gonna use a different brush real quick. I'll use uh, one I'm, let's see, solid ghost. What happens when you combine a brush with a shape? I'm gonna bring up the rectangle tool. And <laughs> now I have a live shape that's using one of those fill tools, fill brushes, and it, it totally respects the perspective and it's a live uh, manipulatable shape. So why is that useful? I mean, besides getting this in perspective um, and getting like both sides of the building, I'm able to use it to kind of create a, let me turn this up a little bit more so you can kind of see this better. I'm able to create a bit of like randomness and, uh, and mess with the concepts a little bit more by just kind of quickly going through and not having to worry about the perspective because I don't care about it, but um, letting the computer do all the work while I'm just like trying to figure out really interesting composition or like what's the structure of the city streets and how do they uh, you know, go through their daily lives, these, these villagers, um, and I can, quickly, quickly sketch out what I want in terms of like interesting stuff. So that's really amazing. It's gonna be the same exact thing for any other brush. So if you want the circle and let's pull out Anthony Jones's uh, just normal round, it's gonna respect the perspective, which thank the gods, we needed this. Um, I didn't go to Art Center and I know 
uh, in Art Center, they teach you how to do perfect circles in perspective. And uh, I don't know how to do that. I could try, but I'm not so good. Um, so when this is live, uh, I'm able to duplicate it. I just cloned it. There's a little button right here in the top corner. I'll clone it again. And you're able to kind of bring that out. But what's also cool about it being live is I could change the brush, I could change the size, change the color, whatever I want to do uh, until I deactivate it by pressing away. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. So in here, I created a, a brick texture brush using the pattern tools. Uh, let's turn this off so you can see a little better. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Um, we're gonna go into pattern in a minute also, but this is so good for, uh, I wouldn't you know, draw like this, um, but it's great for getting a big chunk of texture. So let's go ahead and use the brick and the square um, okay, now I want to put this into perspective. So just like any other app with their uh, transform tools, we've got a pretty solid one. Um, go ahead and change that from basic to distort. And I can put this here, here. And it's kind of like you're at this point, you're able to create your own texture, um, very much like 3D where you're, you have a saved library of all your different um, materials. So I can create uh, brick brushes or anything and quickly, instead of using photo bash techniques for concept art, uh, I can use my own brushes, warp it into space. And in a very rough sense, I can start to go a little bit forward and really start to go to town. So let's turn off this. I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit more and you can kind of see how just like two seconds of work now kind of texturized my uh, my building. And the, the really difficult thing with sourcing uh, photo bash techniques uh, is you need to find photography that has no light source. Uh, and you also need the brick wall to be expansive, like really big. So uh, for me, let's just go back for a second. Uh, I brought one of these textures from Texture Haven or, or some sort of website. And then I custom painted on top. So the real brick is only like four or five of these, like really, really uh, small sample. And then I'm able to duplicate it and uh, create a pattern essentially. So if I could show you what these patterns look like, this is an automatic system, which is so cool. Like, thank you for having this. Because now I can create these photo bash materials uh, without any sort of seam or anything. Uh, and when I export it uh, and use it as a brush texture, it'll automatically tile for you. So if we go into that, let's go back to the Lightbox goodie brush pack. Um, and we check the texture section. You're going to see that all I'm using is the saved photo JPEG from this uh, pattern file. And I'm using it as the texture source for a fill brush. And what we get in the end is <laughs> unlimited fill. You can see how, I don't know if these are matching up perfectly. I might have a little bit of jitter on the location, but uh, you can see how I can create a lot of, lot of uh, unique detail at the very beginning of drawing a building. Um, and then at that point I can hand paint the textures. So we got about 15 minutes left. Uh, I'm gonna jump into it. The final, I guess, style of art that I really love creating with this app. I kind of showed you perspective. Um, you know what, before I do, I do, I do wanna show you one last thing with the dragon scene because um, it's really useful for creating interesting stuff. Okay, so I have a window here and there's a few patterns on, on the architecture that I put in, but if you wanna create a sort of like a uh, pattern for something repetitive like windows, um, let's go ahead and use a tool, call, a tool called the tile tool. Okay, really cool. Cause uh, you might be lost at first cause you need to find your source. You need to create the box around it. Uh, and this is essentially gonna give you the spacing the tiling, you can flip them, uh, you can do all types of stuff here. Um, but for our purposes, we can just create a repetitive window. Okay, I'm just gonna use it like this and then I can grab 
and copy those. Let's see. Isolate is copy, right? Yeah, or cut. Yeah, I would just cut it. Yep. Okay, so yeah, and now I can use those same perspective techniques that I used with the brick and just distort that into place if I want. And at this point, we're gonna get some really nice windows. So use that tile tool anytime you have repetitive um, kind of decoration or windows or something like that. Um, and what's great, I, I didn't show you guys this, is when you distort something like these windows, it's going to respect that perspective. It's not perfect, I didn't line it up perfectly, but it would be able to glide into the next uh, building. And you can, you can see how it, it really nicely respects the transform that you're distorting it with, which is crazy. Like you get a lot of really interesting stuff. Okay, let's back out of here. We got, we got to go, time's running out. Okay, I want to go through my version of this app, which is the paint your painterly stuff. Um, this is just a figure painting uh, session I did recently. Uh, I do want to shout out that we have a figure painting and drawing, drink and draw hangout session tonight from seven to nine Los Angeles time. Uh, and essentially we're gonna be doing a tiki theme tropical figure night. So we're not gonna tell you what the models are gonna be dressed as, uh, but bring your tiki drinks and we'll just kind of have a little chill vibes. Yeah, it's gonna uh, be fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be painting. I'll share my stuff. If you guys wanna share your work, please do. Um, because we're just gonna make like a little bit of a social event. Um, all right, so I'm actually gonna go to my brush pack, which is um, kind of like all of the brushes I have here, the things that I love about my favorite uh, companies that put out mongoose hair, um, brushes, hog hair, rosemary and company, they are by far the best uh, brushes out there. Um, but as a painter, I do, I do a lot of oil work. I needed to get what I felt to be um, kind of the equivalent of a painterly pack of brushes, um, not just for myself and like sketching, but I also wanted to convince a few other painters out there that maybe you do want to try digital painting. Um, not necessarily to get you to stop doing traditional painting, um, but we, we want you to feel like you can take these devices out into the field if you're, let's say, doing a landscape painting or just figure drawing session uh, where you don't want to carry all your brushes, all your paints, the chemicals, the clean up the mess. Um, but you can still do that study, get the accurate colors that you want, maybe get some photography and then bring it back to the studio. And now you have an iPad that has the color study. Maybe you have a photo, which we can pull up, uh, import photo and you bring up, let's say, I could just put up another image here and bring that as reference. So the iPad can then act as your reference guide for you know, hanging next to your easel and starting to play with, with all the, the traditional supplies. So we're not necessarily trying to take you away from it, but I do want people to feel like they can um, rely on it in the same way they would have if they brought their oil paints and their brushes. Um, so one thing I just did was I brought up a uh, reference, which is great because um, if you need uh, any sort of like backup with, with your concept art or something, you're definitely going to want that, but maybe I don't, I don't, I probably don't need it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. What I do want, however, is the navigator to First of all, tell me what my painting looks like flipped. I don't know if you guys know about the old masters, they'd have a mirror and they'd see their paintings in the reflection just to kind of get a, a backwards view. But also how do I check my value? Ugh. It's not really easy. I don't know how you do it. You take a photo and then you turn black and white or in Infinite Painter, you could have your painting going with your flipped version of the painting in black and white. <laughs> And it's a great way to make sure you're doing the, the difficult part like of judging yourself the same way the guy next to you would see your painting originally and, and have a, a judgment to say, like, how do you get that fresh eye for yourself? This is what you do. Get that navigator button. Uh, and there are some settings in here. If you do have a tool that you want to mess with, there's probably a setting dial. So check that. Black and white or color, extremely useful. Um, all right. So before I jump into painting, I kind of want to show you how I use my interface for paint. 
two fingers on your color wheel, drag that out. This is gonna be very useful for just like not having to worry too much about jumping into the interface to pull this up. Um, but I wanna, I wanna show you guys something really interesting. I'll just put this right here so you can see. Um, how many people in the audience work in Photoshop or whatever, and when you spin the dial and you're in like a bright color, let's say yellow, for example, and then you spin the dial to the blue and suddenly you have a really, really dark blue. But like, what if I wanted those two tones to be the, the very same, like a very like subtle shift in color without changing the value? I don't know how you would do that. What I do in Photoshop is I'm like, okay, that blue is way too dark. I need to lighten it. Then when I go to the yellow, I'm like, oh, it's way too bright. I need to darken it. In Infinite Painter, just touch the little sundial right there, right on the edge, this thing, touch it. And now watch what happens. Uh, when I'm on a yellow, it's bright. And then when I spin around, the magic happens. I'm gonna let the, the, uh, the dial kind of readjust the value for me. So this is a tone lock feature that is so good for doing like a high key painting without a ton of contrast or low key painting. Um, look at that, that does a lot for you. So. I'm just gonna get a good brush out here. And um, just so you know, some of these um, brushes I'm about to show you are in fact in our brush pack that we're sending out for free. Um, so you can see how I can do all the colors in the rainbow without shifting too much um, value. Actually, there's no shift in value. If you turn this into black and white, it should all look the same. I do have like a bit of texture going on there, but. Look at this, all perfectly gray. Okay, um, so in this brush pack, uh, the Alaprima brush pack, which uh, we're gonna post links to as well, is for sale for you guys to check out if you really wanna get into the oil painting. Um, this is kind of like the base set for what I use when I go out into the wild. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this piece. Uh, I'm gonna go into the color adjustments and uh, one thing I want you guys to check out if you get a chance is um, the difference between our saturation and hue shift compared to Photoshop or something. Um, look, at, look at the value next to right here. Look at the values. In Photoshop, those values are all gonna fluctuate when they get saturated or desaturated. You're gonna get really blown out. Look at this, I'm doing the slider. I'm really saturated here and the value is the same. How is that possible? Uh, I don't get it. Sean, I don't know what you're doing, but look at this. Yeah, that's you're able a to shift. Yeah, shift. definitely. I'll, I'll reiterate, like, uh, you know, he's drawn a comparison here with other programs. Um, and you guys have probably done this whenever you're posting images. And if you do like saturation or you do contrast, um, like, especially with contrast, you'll notice that sometimes it just like plays, it like warps the saturation of the image. And so um, we're trying to create like a really good separation. So you have more control as an artist to where if you wanna do saturation without changing the tonality or the values, then you can do that. Or if you wanna do uh, contrast without changing the saturation, then you can also do that. So yeah, definitely challenge you to bring them side by side, test our contrast and our saturation against some of the other uh, programs. Um, and yeah, I think you'll definitely see a difference and, you know, feel free to let us know what you like and what you don't like. We'd love to hear about it. So even if you guys just need to, to soup up your Instagram posts with um, an app that'll take care of like the saturation, the hue, you know, all of the color adjustments you might need. Um, that's what this is extremely good for. And if you guys remember like the, the cost difference between um, what I was paying to get access to computer technology um, such as Adobe's, you know, um, monthly uh, bill versus the eight, nine dollars that it costs for one of these apps. And I have everything here. I have all the color. I have all the canvas. I have everything that I need packed into this. My hard drive space is running out. I need more of that. Uh, but <laughs> let me just go in and start doing some painting so you can kind of see how uh, really nice some of these, uh, the brushes work. Um, oh, hey, so, Andrew. Yeah pause you for a minute while you're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hey guys, um, since we're running close to time, like, you know, understand if people have to drop off, we'll probably continue a little bit past time. 
Um, but yeah, I just want to, first of all, just thank everyone for coming. Um, you. If you have any questions at all or any feedback, like we're here to listen. Um, and I'm just going to post our site. Uh, you can join our community and give feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, check us out on Instagram. I mean, we'd really love to hear from you guys. Like we're trying to just make some improvements to the, uh, the whole art community. And so, um, and we, we, we're really passionate about it. So yeah. Okay. And Sean's a great listener. So please tell him, tell him all your pain from, from the programs that aren't listening to what you need. Can't promise we're going to get it to you, but um, we're always like really interested in the next development, the next level of, of creative like technologies. Um, and this has been a passion for, for me for like forever. I've always tried to get it on top of the next uh, piece of tech that's going to make my work better, whether it's the planning stages of a, a larger painting um, or just something I want to use for the rest of my career kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm in a lot of ways ready to move into new, new technologies. So um, what I'm finding is a lot of the younger uh, community, like they don't necessarily have a brand loyalty at this point. They're just like, okay, I'll try whatever. Cause a lot of students are still, still learning what they even want from an app or from these techniques or these technologies. Um, so in that case, if you do have, um, the interest in, in having really amazing tools in your backpack. Like there's never been a better time to get into this kind of uh, industry. So all the new artists out there, you're very lucky. There's a long road to get where we are today. Um, again, I do wanna rem remind everybody that tonight, seven to nine Los Angeles time, we're gonna be having a figure drawing session. But yeah, when you uh, when you get your hands on those brushes, just like go to town, see what happens. Because like, if you look at the amount of depth that you find in a, a single brush, um, you're gonna want to make sure that you're doing a mix of like stabbing the canvas with a lot of pressure, stabbing the canvas with a little bit of pressure, and then a full range of tilts. So watch watch like the difference between stabbing, and then when you do like a lot of tilt, you get like this crazy amount of like scratchy dry brush feeling. Um, and if you hang out with the brush for a while, it starts to turn into like a, a sort of mixer. So you can, without really lifting your hand, you can do a lot of uh, different like effect. This is one brush, one size. I haven't even picked up my hand. So you can see how just a little bit of wiggling kind of gets you in the right position for what you might want to be um, making texturally. But yeah, so definitely excited to uh, hang out a little bit later tonight if you guys want to bring your own pen paper technology whatever you want to do we're going to be there um, we're going to have two models man and a woman and i told you it's going to be tropical themed i can't tell you what yet um i'm gonna try and trick out my set a little bit more i know it's a little tropical right now but it's going to be better um but yeah, late night kind of thing. So bring a tiki drink if you want to, and we're just gonna chill and draw. And of course, uh, at that point, if anyone has questions or if they wanna post their art, we're gonna kind of show off what everybody's working on in the background. Yeah. Um, so we had one question here. Actually, you know, I think since we're kind of just like hanging out, kind of doodling, um, what do you think, Andrew, about kind of opening it up to the room for suggestions? Yes, please. Yeah, so I, I'll go ahead and answer one of these questions because um, I think this is really a, a, a good question is um, do the layer blending modes in PSD translate well in Infinite Painter? And so I'm going to say um, yes, they do. We cover, we cover actually, I think all of PSD blending modes. I'd have to double check that, but I believe we cover all of them. But we also have, which we covered at the beginning of the talk, um, three unique blend modes to Infinite Painter. Um, these are um, basically transparency blend modes. Um, one is an erase blend mode, which acts as a global eraser. So anything you draw on that layer can be used to erase la uh, uh, the, the layers underneath. Um, we have a mask blend mode, which takes the grayscale value to generate a global mask um, that's acted like a blend mode. And then, um, then the uh, line art uh, blending mode, which was showcased a bit earlier, um, what it does is it uses white to knock out any colors below it, and then it transforms the scene into transparency with black ink. So if that helps. Yeah. 
Um, if yeah, anyone has anything they want to see as far as systems in the app, we'd be glad to kind of touch base on those. Um, so kind of open it up to the room if you're interested. So. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'll show while people are gathering their comments or questions is, um, what if we didn't want to use this little black and white thing? What if we wanted a challenge? Like, what if this whole piece was black and white? but I was still painting in color. Let's go through some yeah, of those layouts cool. here. Um, so for those of you who may be working in uh, print or you have like various requirements for your color um, color mode, go ahead and tap the three, what are those, the three layers? Is my touch not on anymore? That's weird. Um, so yeah, touch that and you're gonna go into the uh, color styles. So CMYK, very, like a obvious one, um, but let's go into the grayscale mode, see what happens. Okay, so my painting's black and white, but also my color wheel's black and white. That's confusing, how? So wait a minute, I can color now and choose my color in black and white, but it's painting. Like if you look at the, the uh, thumbnail, it's actually painting color. So this is a way to challenge myself. Now I know, I think yellow's here, blue is here, so now I can basically judge, okay, if I want oranges, it's probably here. I want it to be very saturated and not so uh, dark. So it's a great way to like learn what the color wheel is and get your values right. So I know this is somewhere in the orangey reddish range. Um, and if I want it to be darker red, I can go in here, maybe like a turn of the form. And then I want to go deeper into the, the reds. I don't know if I'm right, but like it's such an interesting way to like test your skills there. Um, which, why would that be useful or come in handy even? Um, when you're painting outdoors, you got so much glare that it's hard to see what color you're even using. So um, I practice knowing the color wheel because with the glare, I need to know exactly where I am on the wheel, hue, saturation. Uh, over here is desaturated on the left and over on the right, it's gonna be your very saturated. Um, so being able to know that and know the colors is very helpful for when you're blinded by glare in the sun. Um, all right, let's go back to the grayscale mode and see what did I paint? Look at that, just like I said, look at those. We started with a nice orange, went a little deeper towards the reds and then saturated and darker and um, very interesting way to kind of test yourself. Um, today's figure drawing session later tonight is not nude, so it is family friendly, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I, I should have warned you guys before I pulled up naked people. Um, you know, actually, there is a pretty cool mode. Um, uh, you know, if you want to actually open up the adjustment layers, um, I don't think we touched too much base on this, but the filter layers are actually a great way to kind of play with your designs. If you like scroll down, um, you know, these are all live effects that are used like on your layer stack. So if you wanted to like bring in that halftone like one, um, you know, you can bring it in, you can like change the strength of it. Um, and then- Oh, you, that's cool. Yeah, and then when you paint underneath, I mean, you can like get a fill for just like playing with effects um, or even like mask them out. Um, which is pretty this cool. Is crazy. <laughs> and then what's cool about this one? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, what's cool about this one is you can actually just like after your your um, you know, you can play around with it. And if you're like, oh man, I feel like that's a little bit too strong, um, then you can you mm. can literally just change the strength at any point in time, and it's totally fine. It might be too strong. Let's be real. Oh, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, actually, I love this. I love this comment. Um, so one one person said, "Can you guys make a feature that translates the image I have in my head to come out in the app?" Oh <laughs> man, I wish. I wish. <laughs> Pretty sure you could pay someone to do that. <laughs> I think that's what artists <laughs> make their careers doing. <laughs> you might be a director, a young director in the making. I have an idea, but who can help me with this problem. So yeah, I'll turn that off and wajam, that's cool. Um, so yeah, you're gonna find all your brightness contrast. Like if you want a global change, like the exposure, 
uh, that's going to be at the top of your stack, um, but it is not going to destroy your layer. So um, very handy. So for anyone who's maybe dealing with uh, where they want to use groups and clip to groups and stuff like that, um, with the, your two fingers, grab the top layer, the bottom layer you want to group. So 12 in one of these bottom ones, and you can pinch them together and you got a group. Uh, I'm going to ungroup that, but it's a pretty solid way to get um, I know for Photoshop, or at least my workflows for a lot of my uh, freelance work, there's just a million groups. It's, it's you got to have it for organization. Yeah, there's um, there's actually that's cool. I, yeah, the pinch grouping is really convenient, especially whenever you want to kind of group a lot of layers like you you show, which is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. There's another a request here about um, are there impasto brush features? So yeah, actually, if you zoom in to these brush strokes here, um, what you're going to see is, um, yeah, like if you do like, you'll see a bit of structure and kind of lighting information baked into the brush. And um, so we kind of balance here um, with, with making sure the brushes are like super snappy and super speedy, but then also kind of bringing just enough of that kind of 3D element to it. Um, so it's a bit of a balance that we play with that. Um, so it's not like a full 3D like like physics simulation, um, but it's something that uh, that you know we want it to be kind of a subtle kind of nice effect. Um, and I you know Andrew hasn't shown this yet, but there's actually if you go to the very bottom of the layer stack, uh, we actually have paper textures that you can do as like a global canvas, and the brushes will interact with that global canvas um, as if you're painting on it. And so if like you can see yeah. kind of like that that lighting of that canvas right there and then if you actually um you know just paint on top depending on what the depth is um you'll see how it's like just barely brushing against the the toothing of that canvas um which is really which is kind of a fun way and in a great way to add like a globally consistent texture across uh multiple layers multiple brushes um, yeah. Yeah. Let me actually pull up a cool example that I stumbled into, and this this is actually going to be built into the brush pack that you guys can download. Um, every time you import a brush that has a texture, you're able to use that texture in your. Um, I'll just show you here. You're able to use it as your paper texture too, so it's automatic. It shows up there, um, and scale wise, let's do a few things. So I want opacity down. Uh, like imagine you wanted to do graffiti. Uh, let's get a decent brush here for that. Say like soft round. Okay. So uh, let's see. You can kind of see how painting on these bricks now becomes, I should probably get a better, more soft one. Let's say like this. I do feel like, uh, what's the best kind of brush for getting the depth to, to really hit home? Yeah, I mean, I think the depth is going to be like the biggest control. And it depends on, because it plays a bit with the depth of the brush and the depth of the paper. Um, yeah, because yeah. I think your, your fill that you're doing right now is actually, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, so you can, you can see how you can use uh, some of these textures to let's say you want to work on a piece of concept art that has graffiti. So you do like quick graffiti and it has the, the kind of background brick texture built into it. Um, so at that point you can turn off your background and look at that, it's got bricks kind of like ingrained into it. So very useful for uh, painterly effects. Um, this is how you're gonna get really cool paper textures. Um, there's, I don't know, there's plenty of random ones that you could use. So let's try this, just see what happens. Yeah, just glides right across it. And that's basically uh, the depth. So I can turn it down, you'll get a little more natural feel. Um, so just using a, a solid, normal Photoshop looking round brush is giving me really interesting effects um, by changing that background, which love it. Uh, I've used it uh, personally. I created in my uh, Alla Prima brush pack um, I think I used this one, uh, and this one kind of emulates, uh, what is this? This is the gesso one, I believe. Yeah, so this imitates, like, when I, when I gesso a fresh canvas or, like, a piece of masonite, I like to give it a little bit of tooth with the brushwork, and so you can see how 
adding that there at the at the back is going to basically ingrain that texture for you. So really good way for creating really painterly stuff, or just kind of think at the very beginning what you want to create with a, a tooth or a texture. James Gurney is a great example where he'll create this kind of really scratchiness uh, where he's planning to put grass and then you can kind of just scumble over it and the grass shows up um, and then you can paint some grass on top too. It's, nice. Yeah. Um, um, we have so one that's, other. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say he's used um, that kind of feature. So create your own custom textures there and you can you do a lot of really interesting effects, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we had one that was uh, uh, asking if ink brushes interact with bleed on paper textures. Um, so our watercolor actually does have a sort of bleed effect, um, but this is actually a technology that we're pretty interested in, um, you know, developing even further. But yeah, I would say like, take the app for a spin, check out the watercolor. Um, that's a good one as an example of like, where it can kind of bleed out and give you some really nice, um, some nice kind of like you're working with water. Um, so yeah, if that helps at all. But yeah, all uh, the brushes can interact with paper, not just the paint brushes. Yeah, I actually want to show, I haven't really showed anyone. I don't even think I've shown you these brushes I made, Sean, but um, I ended up making some foliage brushes just to kind of see what was up. Um, and I'm yeah. using the bleed effect. Let's see, that's not fun. Let's see this one. There we go. All right, this is pretty cool because uh, essentially it's, it's using that watercolor stuff, but I've, I've done a few things with my brush um, to, to get it to kind of give me really quick uh, and like solid results for leaves. So the one thing that I find difficult about trees um, is, is the randomness, like the patchiness of, of the full shape. So this is a great brush to let bleed for a second and maybe go back a couple of times, lighten up your value, saturate it a little more. And you start to get some like really interesting effects there. Um, and this is just using essentially a scan. Let's pull up what that looks like. Uh, the head is a photo I took of some leaves and they're just kind of like jittered around. Um, you are able to accept the color of the plant or the image that you're using to colorize uh, the head, uh, which is great for leaves. So um, in this case, I kind of went around my neighborhood. I shot a photo with the iPad. I cut out the leaves and then I might have started with something uh, that's already pre-built into the app to get that sense of like watercolory flow. And then you can just tap. So the, the flow is becoming more if you hold the brush down. And that's how I was able to get like a really interesting silhouette. Oops. Oh, I didn't show those either. Totally forgot about that. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the shape snapping would be a really good thing to know. Yeah. So for anybody mm -hmm. who um, likes to do like very solid construction, um, I'm gonna keep going to Anthony's round brush, it's pretty standard and everybody's gonna have access to it after today. Um, so I do a lot of line art uh, for, for work sometimes where everybody struggles hitting that mark. Like, oh, I can't, can't get the perfect line. Um, and shape snapping is, is gonna be an amazing way to do that for yourself. So when you drag a line, um, it's gonna become like a smart type line and just tap on it real quick. You're gonna see what's going on. Um, this gives you access to the anchor points. Uh, are these considered anchor points or what are these called? Uh, yeah, control points. I mean, control whatever, points. It doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, whatever whatever you want to call them really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can see how I can quickly like mark up the side of a vehicle with a very slick S curve, um, slightly change the flow of it. And if you want to delete a point, just kind of drag it over. Um, so that's great, but sometimes it's not like the best way to do it. So if you want to pull out a couple tools, we have the path tool. Would you say that's a good one to? Yeah, it's a good one. If you want to kind of like walk the line work, like if you're worried about just like getting some really nice uniform line work, um, then yeah, bring out the path tool. This is going to be similar in other programs to what's called a pen tool. 
um, but it's just a, a bit more contextual because instead of having like um, like options to delete points or add points or insert yeah. points, like everything works right there where you're at it. So if you want to, for example, insert a point right now, you would just pull like right there on the the uh, the edge of that path. Part of this with the shapes is that they kind of have this like they're kind of in like a vectorized state um until you commit them to the canvas so but i think that i i would probably honestly consider that a bug that needs to be fixed just because if you're undoing you probably intend to undo that one as well mm -hmm. but yeah really cool um let's see the one that might be most useful for somebody who has a plan like the silhouette of a lamborghini or something uh probably going to be the pen tool which close the pen tool here we go, um, which is more like you, pl you plot your line, uh, but it doesn't give you the brush stroke yet. And it's not like a smart uh, stroke either at this point. It's more of like um, a magnet for your brush. So let's go ahead and accept that by locking it. And at this point, now I can go to town and, and do a brush work make it fatter and, and look at that. So if you have typography you wanna work on with like a very smooth transition or a curve, this is how you do it, which is awesome. Okay. Um, one thing that the, uh, to go back to the line art, one thing that the line art people might like is this hatching feature right here. Sean, does anyone have the hatching feature? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, the hatching feature is a fun one. So let's imagine you have a real pen and you're scribbling back and forth. It's going to look like this. Um, but as like a professional inker, you might have to like do this all day where you have to like create really like nicely planned and thought out hatching. Um, but if you're in a hurry, that's not the best way. I did show you a cool way earlier with those brushes um, to get, let's try that one more time, to get hatching. So that's one way. But um, I'm going to show you a new thing that kind of is a game changer for any of those artists out there. The hatch tool literally deletes your trip home. So I didn't let go of the, the, the tablet at all that time. This is all one single stroke. And I'm just dragging. So essentially, I can kind of like do rapid scribble, and it's erasing your way home. So it's taking that out of the equation, which is perfect for anyone who has a job that has to do this. <laughs> kind of tough, right? Um, but in terms of speed and um, getting the right look and feel, very convenient. Look at that. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, definitely suggest trying that one out for anyone who wants to work further on those ink projects. Um, I'm gonna show you how to create a brush the same way that I used this app to create my brushes that uh, we shared with you earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the texture and paper you can go back to white. All right, um, so basically you're dealing with, when you're working with a cool um, paintbrush, you're dealing with two different things. You've got the head, which is this little like splatter thing, uh, and then the texture. So if you have any sort of grunge or if you want to put canvas and stuff, texture is where you're going to go. But I feel like the main character for an oil paintbrush is coming from uh, the head source. And essentially what you got to imagine here is take an oil brush or any of your favorite um, brush, dip it in ink and just kind of like tap the paper and get that stamp. So imagine just black ink stamping. Uh, and that's kind of the process here. So for me, I'm gonna go, let's see, back to the fill. And this is how I make brushes that are a little more bristly. So you kind of picture all of the little bristles. Um, now what's really cool about our system is you can have grayscale on here too which, oops, yeah. So the fact that I'm using black and gray 
will will add depth to it. So it's almost like the black bristles are the ones that are at the very top that the paper or the canvas touches first. And then the harder you press, you're going to start to get into the lower values uh, or the higher value of these other grays here. Yeah, can you so actually you get, do some, can you do some lighter values too? Because I actually want to showcase yeah. that um, that depth feature in the head yeah. as well. Uh -huh. And then we're like really close to to white. Okay, so what I usually like to do is create a cluster or a clump in the middle. That's kind of like no, no, any paint or anything will pass this area. We kind of want it to be full in the center. Uh, and then you can go to town with some extra details. And what I also like to do, just to kind of speed things up, is to duplicate that uh, and then transform it and kind of like add to the randomness. Okay, I'm going to merge these two and pull up the lasso tool, which is um, if anyone wasn't here at the very beginning, if you have a tool you want to bring out, um, just go ahead and drag and put it up on your toolbar. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to grab this guy. And the, the main way is kind of cheating that I make brushes, um, but I'm going to show you the basic thing to do. Once you're in this mode, you've got all of your uh, transform, duplicate, copy, merge. And at the very, very, very right, you're going to see plus brush. And that captures the head for you and it puts it into the head sources. So now you can kind of grab that anytime you want. So let's do that. And assuming you don't have my brush pack, you would go into some paint brush, find a brush you really like. Like, let's say this flat oil. What does this look like? Okay. So let's say you like the fluidity, the pressure, the tilt. This is a great brush for you. Um, what you want to do is duplicate it by tapping these three buttons here. Duplicate. And we'll just change that to a light box. OK, so now I can go into the brush editing and change that head source. OK, so this is the brand new brush using that same head. Um, if it has a texture, it's you can delete that. But yeah, so that's how you get your own version of a nice paintbrush by just kind of quickly starting with that little bit of a like a pattern splatter kind of thing. Just picture all the little hairs uh, or bristles on a brush, and then it's like all the fluidity that you liked about the brush you chose is going to be built in. The tilt is going to be there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, not sure what else I need to show you guys. It's kind of like at this point, you just need to jump in and play around and just start going to town. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we covered a lot of bases. Um, I don't think there's anything specific that we can cover, uh, you know, but if you guys have any questions, um, I'm actually answering one on the, uh, the chat right now. I'll just answer it out loud. Um, so as far as like uh, docking the color palette, actually on Android, there's a feature currently where if you go into you open up the color path, the color panel, um, you can either drag it out with two fingers, that color wheel. But if you want to actually dock the color palette itself, then you can press the little three dots on the bottom right um, and then it'll say dock palette. So that's specific right now for the Android version. Um, we have something right now in development for the iOS version and for a future Android version. Um, but uh, PK in the chat mentioned that um, there's a really, uh, there's another great way to work with palettes with reference images. Um, mm -hmm. You can just bring out the, uh, the bring out the, um, you can basically screenshot what the palette is um, and then bring mm -hmm. it in as a reference image. And then you can actually just Pretty tap smart. reference image to sample. That's pretty smart. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Cause you can just like two finger, you know, move it wherever you want, Clever whatever girl. you want. And then you can just tap uh, to grab that color. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool uh, kind of pro pro technique. Um, it's kind of, kind of hidden. So lots of fun. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things where once you get um, a couple hours under your belt of, of a new program, you really start to kind of understand what it's about. 
then you can invent new ways to work. Like I had never heard of what Sean just suggested um, by getting the color palette uh, as a screenshot that you kind of bring in as a reference. But that's the kind of thing that I'm looking forward to when new techniques, new technologies come out, the crowd gets a hold of it. And even though Sean and I were planning for it to go one way, you guys may have totally different ideas in your head, um, which totally encourage you guys to do that. So Sean, can you give out the, um, I know you have community forums and stuff like that. Can you give out some of that information so they know where to go? If they have questions, we have a entire. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll post the link to the website and also to the Instagram again. I'm also for all the ones that are still in here, um, little treat from a presentation that we did yesterday with Tiffany Ming. Um, she, um, I, help, I worked with her on um, putting together a little brush pack for her demo. And there's a cool one in there called Shape Junk. Um, and it actually uses the depth feature that Andrew mentioned earlier. But what it does is basically based on pressure, it allows you to kind of lay down lines versus circles versus squares based on how heavy you actually press down. So pretty cool. I'm gonna post it here in the chat with a few other links. Uh, if you guys are interested and yeah, if you guys, if you guys uh, have any type of feedback, just reach out um, through uh, some of the channels that I'm going to post here. Okay. Give me one second. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a cool brush. Um, and, and it's one of those things where Sean made something really weird and interesting that I'm like, oh, wait, I have other ideas for that. So the more we get people to kind of like jump on these things and, and experience it their own way, the more everybody's going to learn about better ways to do stuff, um, which I'm totally, I love it. I love it. So please, yeah, mess with this, play around, make your own brushes, share with us, and we'll see what, what we can come up with. All right. Um, yeah, so I think we're just wrapping up, but I just want to thank everyone again for coming. Um, you guys are awesome. And thanks, thank Andrew. You. Yeah. It's been been fun. Please don't forget. Um, I'm Andrew. You can find me at theonitis.com. You'll find my, you know, variety of portfolio work there. Um, as well as tonight, we're going to be hanging out from seven to nine Los Angeles time to do figure drawing. And I don't know, just come chill with us. Uh, if you do have any questions, Sean, is there a place that they can reach out if they have something they want to ask? Yeah, I mean, I think the best the website, but if you actually, if you want to reach out my email or through Instagram's like uh, messaging system, that's also fine. I'm going to go ahead and post our email as well. Uh, it's going to be support at infinitestudio.art. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Take care. Thank everyone. you. Enjoy the rest of Lightbox. Enjoy.